Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC for do every DIY and we have another service call for an LG Multi-V unit. Somebody left a comment that we should set up some crates up there because we've been having some issues up here. We got them. <laughs> Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we're working on an LG Multi-V 5 unit. So we had a service call for one of the rooms. We came in there and the only thing that's going on is the fan is running. So I felt that the pipe wasn't cold. They said it was that was the only room that had an issue. So I figured the unit was running. But came up here and I noticed that the condensing unit is not operating. So it seems to be an issue down here. Right, first things first, check the main control board. Oh yeah, error code. C11261. 261. Oh man, I think we got those crates, man, because we needed that for this unit. This had the same exact code. Oh boy, don't tell me it's another inverter board and compressor. Oh man. All right, so we're gonna use the first two for the error, two six. Outdoor unit inverter compressor start failure. Cause of error, the first start failure by outdoor unit inverter compressor abnormality. Yep same code as the last time we got something going on with that compressor and inverter board let's run our checks we just turned the power off you got to wait about five minutes for everything to de-energize in here before we can begin troubleshooting all right we got an assortment of meters we got the Klein tools ET 600 thank you to whoever recommended this to me definitely a great mega meter we're gonna use that to check the compressor and we're gonna use the Fluke 902 FC and then my Field Piece S260. I believe that's what the model is to check the boards. All right, so we're gonna to wanna to do a few checks. But the thing is the boards that we wanna check is behind here. It's like over here. So we're gonna take off one, two, three, and four screws and pull this back so we can get to that inverter board so we can make our checks. All right, so we gotta take off those screws in order to pull this out. Let's move this out the way. And these wires are super tight. We're gonna wanna take out these three screws so we could actually pull this back because it's really in our way. Pick. I got this, I'll just try to open it this way. Those wires out the way. Little by little, let's try to move, let's not stretch everything too much. I hold it right there one second. I'm gonna be able to put this here. And I think this. Let go for a second. Let go over there too. Let me let me see. Is it gonna hold? All right, hold up. Alright, I might be able to check it like this, but just in case, just balance it, okay? So this is the converter board, this is the inverter board, this is the fan board, this is the main board, I think that's the power board, that's the rectifier, we are learning this thing. I think this is the noise filter board. Anyways, this guy is who I'm interested in. This is, this is the troublemaker right here. You can see a bit of a, like we got like a burn mark or something like that around here. That's sometimes a... An indication all right so we're looking for this guy right here pull push down on that tab and it comes out four, pins four and five is ground six is your five volt seven is your 15 volt we're gonna check between five and six we should read above one kilo ohms if not it's bad then we're gonna check between five and seven we should read above 10 kilo ohms if we have lower than that and it's bad. Let's do that quick resistance check right now. Five, four, All right, we're reading 
let's see if it's above 1k ohms then it's good let's see where that balance is at we got 1000 wait let's make sure we got a good reading here let's see where that average is out if it goes below that 1000 reading it's bad all right we do have above 1k ohms 1846 let's check the next pin We're supposed to read above 10 kilo ohms look it's going down yeah look at that got it below a thousand it's supposed to read above 10k ohms we got 925 ohms and dropping right away that's bad but i want to do the complete check on this board see what got what's going on here i could see something is up with here i've never seen that kind of stain before i'll leave a picture of that all right let's do our next check we're gonna do a diode test right now let's see we're supposed to read but we're supposed to read 0.38 to 0.7 volts what you got? Uh, three, four, three point seven. Well, I think it's going crazy. Yeah, it's crazy numbers. So now it's twelve point five. Twelve? Okay, well, look at twelve point nine. It's supposed to be but point three eight to point seven. Right away, that's bad too. This board is fried. Let's check this side. We got nothing. Try this again. Let's make sure we got a good, good reading right there. OL, nothing, we got nothing on there. All right. The next check will be the IGBT. This board is bad. We already know it. Do the next check. We put the black lead on P. It's important which lead goes where. You're dealing with DC volts here. Black on P, and then red over here. It's supposed to read between 0.38 and 0.7. See, this this part of the board is in range. You got 0.39, and this one, 0.39. This one, 0.39. That side checks out. Then they want you to put positive on negative, and then check again. 0 0.39, 0 0.39, 0 0.39. So that's the only that survived in this board. But the diode went out, and then our resistance check for whatever this is, no good. Bad inverter board. Copy that. My main concern right now is that compressor. All right. Here's the Klein ET600 megameter. And buried down there, I just took off a pair of the jacket. That's our compressor, the three terminals. I'm gonna isolate the compressor wires and do a resistance test. All right, so we're isolating right now. got the compressor isolated i got one clipped on to one terminal and the other to the casing of the motor the compressor i'm gonna do a 500 volt test let's test it okay it went above 4000 all right next terminal Why'd it go down there? That's a much lower reading. 724 mega ohms. All right, last one. Ooh, that started off low. Yeah, those are low, pretty low readings compared to the other. And it started off real low. 
but it, it, it checks out, but it's on its way out. All right, guys, it's nighttime already. Compressor's on its way out. Inverter board is bad. I just want to follow up and just do a full complete check. I know they want us to check that converter board before we get a final diagnosis. All right, we're going to check the bridge diode on here. Set the meter to diode. I'm going to put the black on P. And then check RST. We should be reading that same 0.38 to 0.7. Got 0.5. 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay then we're gonna put the red on n and do the check rst again 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 that checks out and then one last resistance test next you want to take off this harness right here nine is ground ten is five volts 11 is 15 volts between ground and 5 volts we should read above 1 kilo ohms and then between ground and 15 volts we should read above 10 kilo ohms all right black on 9 now this is the 5 volt term it's supposed to read above 1 kilo ohm it's coming down but let's see where it averages out see it just slow down a bit we got a six kilo ohms. Now the next one, points nine and 11. No way. Okay, hold up. Hold up, I got a bad connection here. That's me. Oh yeah, 44 and climbing. This board checks out. Bad inverter board and compressor on its way out. Might be a good idea to change both at the same time, but there's no way we're going to get them up and running right now. There's nine rooms. This is a hotel. So there's nine rooms right now with no heating or cooling. This is terrible. That I think, honestly, the best thing is to change both. But I wonder if we change this board on its own, will it work? All right, guys, it's 9 p.m. We got the board. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly change it and give this thing a shot. All right, guys. I'm gonna disconnect all the wires. I'm gonna lose these screws. screws around the board now we got these last two here careful not to lose this screw this one's we really need Okay, this little clip. Right there. looking for any physical damage they definitely got a bunch of white stuff here and some burn marks here whatever this thing is bad got the new board but first we're gonna clean up that excess thermal paste let's 
sure how well you guys can see, but it is what it is. I got some silicone heat sink compound, dielectric. I'm gonna put one nice line going through. press it against there and put all the screws it's all gonna flat it out okay let's be careful get it through the clip right there clip is holding and let's get those screws in back these three wires all right this is all set up right here you can see right there it's off the clip as you can see it's like a little crooked I think it's on its way out to fall I try to clip it back on right there it's on the little clip Let's see if the top is as well Put everything back and we turn the power on and we flick the switch i hear like the compressor trying to start or something like it clicks then shuts off we got the same error same exact error step back compressor it's not starting that compressor is gonna have to come out all right guys we're gonna wrap it up here we're gonna have to come back and change that compressor and double check that that board is actually still good we're gonna wrap it up here if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time